Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Thrifty Thursday, Thrifty Connects here at Studio Lou. This is my weekly thrift haul. Check my description box down below to see the thrifting collaborations that are hosted by some lovely folks here on YouTube in our community. So I have a I have a bit more of a thrift haul than I expected because I went out today for like a little bit this afternoon with my husband. We just kind of wanted some time to putter around. So we did do that. So the first thing I want to show you today is not necessarily like a thrift store find. Um, I had a really nice um, March break with my kiddos and I went to a lovely city nearby that we like to go to sometimes called Hamilton and um, we wandered the downtown, went to Cabinet of Curiosities which is like an oddity shop and museum and we stumbled, you know, we're walking down the street and all of a sudden this lovely, lovely guy said, hey, come here, do you want to see some baby chicks? And I was like, okay, sure, yeah. My daughter was like already pacing many steps ahead of me. So they they were hosting this event. Um, like, I don't think I have to have the flyer with me. Maybe I, I do. No, I don't. I may, I may have it later. If I do, I'll show it to you. But they were sort of hosting this little chicken, um, their, their front window. They were putting baby chicks in it um, around Easter time. But it was also to raise money for like... Um, you know, unhoused people. And it was just a cool little thing. Like there was a little donation box and there was a, another organization that was also involved. So the shop is called the Boho Studio and it's in like downtown Hamilton, Ontario. And so what I got there, I ended up getting to chat with the lovely woman who owns the store. She was so cute. And I think we had a, a shared sense of humor and I showed her like, um, one of my latest journals, the one that I made about the Black Widow with the cabinet card on the front. So showing her kind of why I was interested in her cabinet cards. So she gave me a really lovely price on, on these. I would say like that they are on par absolutely with the price that I pay at like estate auctions and those kind of things. So the first is just this picture, but see this girl here, she's got like a, what are those called? A um, not a hoe, not a rake. I guess it's kind of a rake, but it's like a long one. A pitchfork? Yeah. Like in front of her face and the other one's got some kind of a um, thing in her hand. And I just thought it was an interesting like photo. <laughs> and then I got some cabinet cards. So this first one, look at these lovely kids. This is from Barrie, Ontario. You know, imagine just having kids dressed like this. So this is turn of the century for sure. Um, early 1900s would be my guess. And then she just threw in like a couple little handwritten letters. This is to Cora from Earl. It's about some pages uh, that were revised. You have new pages in set. I am sending you these to show how they were improved. Please check them. Use a scratch or to send me more data. Um, so it's probably someone doing some editing. And then look at this lovely cabinet card. Isn't this like on its own, even if there wasn't a picture inside? I love it. So it's got the frame that you can pop out at the back if you wanted to stand it up, um, which is pretty cool. You know, like it's an all-in-one kind of frame. Um, but then when you open it, you know, this, this is all embossed. So you open it to this beautiful wedding photo and look at the beautiful embossing here. Isn't that amazing? It's just so pretty. I'd love to still see these kind of things, you know, like wedding photography done this way. Cause like it's got this little, this little latch there closes it up. That would be nice on the cover of a book. We could tell a story about those two. And then this one is a grungy old cabinet card. Loved her hair though. So pretty. And it says Johanna from Judea, Julia, no to Hannah from Julia. Yeah. And this one's cool because I like how she's framed like this way and the card itself is just really nice but she looks kind of like you know uh a little bit interesting because she's off kilter and then this lovely this is from Toronto the T Eaton company so this is Eaton's beautiful embossing and look at this guy Look at his beard. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. He's like Mr. S old Mr. Sandman or something. He's funny. Then this one. 
I love these little kids. They're so like, uh, they're just cherubic, right? Like they're adorable, these little <laughs> babies. And it's a tin type. It's a lovely photo. And then this cute little pocket style one. This would be a nice like thing to use as like a a template, right? To, to create this shape with that little tuck there. Um, Cause there's a little, see there's a little divot here this goes into like that and then I'm not even sure what this is for I don't know oh yes I do it's for yeah if you're to turn it back and then you could poke this in here like that see and then it would be a standing frame like this so how cool that's a great design maybe we should uh we should cut that out and draw it or something so this is Helen Hood Howard and Olive's daughter and like look how pretty this is and she's so cute I love her necklace and her collar um this cabinet card I love so much do you see her yawning you know like most things are so perfect right back then like I mean even though a lot of photography took a long time to accomplish people they worked hard you know Oh, it's making me on. It's making me on. <laughs> um, and then this hilarious picture of these girls. They look like the ones who had to sit for a photograph for far too long. And they're like, oh my God, is this over with yet? <laughs> and they're so cute. So here's the shops card. The Boho Studio. It's 323 Ottawa Street North. Um, and yeah, they're, they're lovely people. I have to say, like, I, I enjoyed going in there. And they're really nice with my daughter. And then she gave me this little Laura um, left May Queen for 1932, age 14, Velma, right, May Queen. I wonder if this goes, are these the May Queens, the 1932 and 31? The, the, they don't look like they're 14 and 16 years old, so I don't know. Life was hard back then, who knows. And then this little wallet here of snapshots from Weyburn, Saskatoon, I'm um, sure Saskatchewan, sorry. Um, and this guy here is in the front and the rest are just these black you know pages but I thought that would be a cool little add-in somewhere it's fun and you could put whatever you wanted into it and then on the same day we went for a wander um, around the local cemetery and at the waterfront and so I found some abandoned art which I don't like I often see abandoned art but I don't often pick it up but this one I really liked because it's a it's a crocheted bookmark it's so cute so I thought I would maybe use it in one of my journals and also I'm using this as kind of a plan to do the abandoned art project with my daughter um so I think we'll do that and it says enjoy the bookmark this was a whole little write-up about like kind hearts are the garden and words are the something um I can't read it anymore but it's basically just about kindness and giving back to the world and it's about the abandoned art project essentially and then other cool little finds entirely my daughter so look at this little green feather she found and it's got two little spots on it. I haven't identified what kind of feather this could be, but it's really cool. And I think there were lots of ducks around that day. There were American coots, common mergensers, like normal mallards and all sorts. And there was just that little feather. And then she also found this bone, um, which is probably a spinal bone from a small mammal. Um, there's lots of beavers in the area and other sort of small creatures like that, but it's quite an interesting little found object, right? So yeah, my daughter has that, uh, the knack of finding cool little things. So I'll just plop those, whoops, back there. And plop this over here too, because I'll probably put that in a journal coming up. So we'll move these guys out of the way and we'll move on to the other thrifty goods. So this is like not junk journal really related this one thing but I got to show you because I love it so much so for those of you who have um, heard you know in the past if you've been around I probably talked about this as I'm a vintage toy collector as well I have another YouTube channel that I don't really update much but there is some stuff there if you're ever bored and want to look at it the channel is specularia and um, this is a really cute unicorn so I, uh, I I pick these up whenever I find them they're so cute this is a unicorn surprise this one's not super old it's just from 2018 Ed Kaplan um, 
so these have been around for a long time though I think since like the 70s the uh, puppy surprise and kitty surprise the surprise animals so but I really like this rainbow unicorn so the whole surprise about them is that the bottom opens up and usually when I find them at thrift stores they're empty but this one has her babies and some babies are special some of them have a sound box in them some of them glow in the dark um, there's like different some have clothing um, this is one white baby and two rainbow babies I think yeah this one has sparkly ears so see like they're all a little bit different and uh, you can get up to six I believe inside these things so I got three in her which is pretty good I, I sometimes um, have gotten them where they have only one baby but often they have no babies but I have had one that was like um, had all six uh, like of the actual babies from the actual thing and then one time I got a kitty surprise and somebody had stuffed the tummy just full of random different surprise babies there was like a, a bunny a lamb a unicorn like it was so funny so yeah I, I always like these I think they're very cute then the other thing I got from that shop um a couple things so this was 49 cents and when we open it up actually I'm just going to cut this bag oh these are the worst scissors on the planet they only cut paper nothing else <laughs> It's full of like little bits of things, but mostly I wanted the appliques. There's some little sparkly ribbons and randomness um, that I probably don't need the majority of. Yeah, I'll probably just leave that in my scraps. But otherwise, it has floral appliques. So this one, very cool. And it's got strawberries that have been um, cut out. This is a felt heart I probably don't need. But then I do like the strawberries. Because someone took the time to fussy cut that out of fabric. And that is really cool. And will be a nice slow stitch kind of add-on, right? So yeah, those are my goodies from that. Just set them to the side. Um, <clears throat> and then I also got this beautiful tablecloth they also had one all in shades of blue and purple but I ended up going with this because I don't normally get these colors and I just thought this was so pretty and like it's a whole tablecloth like it's a large square so here's kind of <clears throat> what it looks like you know it's it's much larger it's a big linen tablecloth so yeah it will make journal covers for sure it's beautiful it would also be great for slow stitching um next thing hold on <clears throat> and then the bulk of my thrift is from my little adventure today with my husband so okay so first thing I found was this book called the rabbits John Marston and Sean Tan so it's got a really interesting style and it's a nice book it, it's a uh, kind of a way of looking at why we need to take care of the planet um, and I like how the illustration is done I'm not exactly sure yet how I will use it if I use it in a journal but like look at the rabbits so that's one of the rabbits um, and it's kind of like a see here look at these these are like colonial you know settler type rabbits so this is a story basically about colonialism and how it's hurt our world um, in a way that I think you can have conversations like platform conversations with your children about you know why settlerism mindset is not the best uh, not good at all actually so yeah it's it's good and it talks about you know just it, it honestly really mirrors the indigenous experience and um, yeah it's it's one of those things it's it's like not not all uh, stories right are positive ones are happy rainbow ones because that's not what life is right so it helps to have platform conversations of that nature 
And then I found this Winnie the Witch by Quirky Paul and Valerie Thomas. It's a winner of the Children's Book Award. And I just love these kind of children's witch stories. I love the illustrations. These are so great around Halloween, making fun witch journals and stuff. I've made a few like from other children's kind of spooky books. And this one I just really like. I thought it was a great great pictures and it's a fun story and she's hilarious <laughs> it's a really cute witch story then I found this I was like should I get this or not my husband's like yeah go for it so <laughs> this was three dollars it's a huge stack and what it is these are all cards right that have a rose on them um so my thought process here is like it's good card stock and you can easily make cards with them like by covering up this rose so you know they all fold obviously they're cards so you know you go ahead and do to that nice crease it's already pre-folded and it's a nice shape so you know you could also cut them in half and use them as tag bases it's just good quality card stock so why not um for three bucks so that is that one And then I found some linens, <clears throat> which I shouldn't be getting because I've been really thinking a lot about like needing to go through my linens and uh, sort them out. So this is, I think, two. Yeah. So they're these, um, they're like kind of like placemats or like runners. They're like a purpley tone and they're all like stitched around and then they have these kind of like daffodil. Well, yeah, they are daffodils you know stitched on each end and there's two of them <clears throat> so I thought that those were very cute for a dollar why not they would make a nice wrap around a journal you could trim it to whatever size you wanted and you know very fun then I found this linen I've been finding too many good linens lately and I'm like stop with the linens but you know what can you do look how cool this is I haven't seen this kind of stitching before with these gaps in that beehive kind of like it's so awesome so yeah that I had to get I just had to you understand okay and then I found this um, it's some lovely crochet I just pull the tags off as I go because they drive me crazy um which side's the right side up this one okay so yeah so they've like it's crochet lace and then they've like crocheted around fabric to make these flowers and it's a big round so yeah and then this is um this was a dollar and it's linen and it's a long kind of runner with it has two of these on it so one on each end and then it's blanket stitched around the edge I'm actually trying to kind of fold things because I'm going to try to put them away neatly in my mess and then this is felt but I really think it's cute so it's just a piece of felt it's a square and in all four corners it has these little flowers and they are stitched on and then one is really like more 3d than the others which I may just take those ones off and leave the others and like use those on a journal cover although I could use that on a journal cover too it doesn't matter I'd probably reinforce the stitching a bit though um, Oh, and then my husband, he found this little tiny scotch mug for 50 cents, this little scotch glass. So he's like, I think I will take that. I'm like, okay. So I'll take that up to him. He also found like an amazing, like really high quality USB turntable. And they had it there for $5 because they're like, it turns on, but it doesn't work. So it would be perfect for, you know, the handyman. So my husband is, he's a former um, DJ and he has a massive, massive vinyl collection. Um, 
So he, um, he picked it up and he brought it to me. He's like, look at this. I'm getting this. I'm like, okay. He almost never buys anything these days. So he's like, you know what's wrong with it? And I said, no. He said it doesn't have a belt and belts cost nothing. So that's the only problem is there's no belt. Like, oh my goodness. Okay. You just gotta bring the big bag over here. They gave me this gigantic bag because I also got some clothes for my kids. But they had some really cute stuff. I also found I should have I should have showed it to you, um, but I wanted to wash it. I found a beautiful handmade queen size quilt. It is patchwork um, with the little ties, but it's made from gorgeous fabrics. And uh, yeah, it was eight dollars and um, definitely handmade. And somebody wrote on the back of it about this big in black magic marker, just like Jesus loves you. <laughs> So I brought it home and I hit it with some um, OxyClean. It got it right off and now it's in the wash and I'm going to put it on one of the beds. I was like, what? So this book is Masquerade by Kit Williams. If you've been around for an age, you've seen this book here on my channel. I've used it in different things before. It is a stunning, stunning illustrated book. Um, and, you know, the illustrations are very different and varied and interesting and um this is one of my favorite this this dandelion girl with the crow but yeah kit williams wow amazing just a beautiful book each picture in this book has a hair in it somewhere can you find them in the picture so yeah there's a hair hidden in each of these pictures that's cute i did not even know that my daughter will like that um, and then I found this book, Cat Knees and Bees Whiskers, Sandy Nightingale. Let's see what it looks like here. It's printed in Italy, 1993. Cover looks like the dust jacket. I think I will toss the dust jacket. It's got something sticky on it and I, I don't want to go with sticky. No thank you. Um, so I'm just away. Then when you open it, it's got really cute pictures of a witch. So this is another witchy kind of book. I didn't even expect it to be a witchy book, but so it is. So that'll be a nice, uh, <laughs> a really fun story to tell. I'll probably read it with my kids first. And then this book, I wasn't sure at first, but I got it because the books are 50 cents and I'm like, why not? So this is Tail Feathers from Mother Goose, an Opie Ryan book. Um, it's got a huge variation of different styles of illustration, um, but it's got a lot of really nice pictures. There's probably stuff in here that like I won't use, but there's a lot that I will. Like, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Mrs. Burns Lullaby. And you know, you never know, like if you're making, say, a farm journal, these kind of things come in handy. I like, that's one thing I really like about fairy tale stories is, you know, as you go through, you find things like horse journals. I see people make horse journals, you know, um, something about, you know, dreaming and sleeping. This is just a nice landscape but also if you were doing a nautical book. And then pigs, I keep finding things with pigs. If you were doing a circus or a kid's journal. This is some Quentin Blake. Look at that, Riddling Song. That's also very sweet. Priscilla Lamont, she has a really nice illustration style. And this has like, you know, graveyard kind of vibes to it. And then a fishing. Look at this Welsh rabbit. <laughs> the genius. Elephants. These beautiful goose. Goose wing chariot. That whole image is just amazing. That would be amazing like wrapping around a book. But yeah, just um, lots of good stuff in these books. There's a beautiful owl. Which was one image that did captivate me and convince me that I just needed to say, all right, let's go home. Um, did I lose it? There it is. 
Yeah, the owl. Okay. And then this book, Somewhere Today, by Burt Kitchen. And um, it's really cute. So it's a Candlewick Press book, and it's from... 1992 and it's really cute so it's got great illustrations but then somewhere today a sea otter is floating on its back for lunch and then it talks about that somewhere today a pair of western grebes is running over water somewhere today a chameleon is reaching out for food two bald eagles talons locked are plummeting through the sky somewhere today two brown hairs are boxing Somewhere today a spotted skunk is doing a handstand. You know, so just fun dung beetles. So funny. Oh, the bluebirds of paradise and a dormouse. Super cute. Okay, so I got this book because I want to read it with my daughter because it's like age appropriate. Hot Fudge Pickles by Marilyn D. Anderson. So there's a treasure in here. Look at this. This is like a little, I don't know, it's like a book report. So it says Elisabetta I Salal or Salad Salal, I think. Hot Fudge Pickles by Marilyn D. Anderson. I thought it was a funny story because they had a big celebration just for the taste of green monsters. And when people had sick problems. They ate a green monster and the sick problems were gone. It is about a boy called Alvin who made a big invention called Green Monster. I think this book is good for a grade four, five, or six. <laughs> so my daughter's in grade two, but I think this is uh, this is good for her. It's from 1984 and yeah, it's we're getting going on uh, chapter books, so... Although, you know, it's funny to see that, that book, because I, I was sort of thinking, like, when my daughter started going to school, I feel like kids are reading at a more advanced expectation these days than when I was a kid, I, like, because I was an advanced reader, and I'm kind of like, hmm, this seems interesting. So these are all, like, folders that just have little labels on them of book names. They were 50 cents, and, you know, I use folders for so many things, like backing a lot of my ephemera. So those are going to go right here beside me in my stash of folders and backing papers. I have them all in a banker's box and like hopefully it doesn't explode one day. Okay, so then this was also 50 cents. Maybe we can get that off. I don't know why they stick these. These ones aren't so bad, but um, this is just like a steno notebook of nice like yellowy kind of manila construction paper like probably children's writing paper or painty paper and then i found this graph paper 50 sheets of drawing paper and it's really cool it's big and also um it's a nice graph right so yeah i like this little peaky hole it's cool i love finding vintage paper and then I found this fun, um, this was a quarter, and it was, it's, you know, dandelions and dragonflies, and they're translucent uh, silvery stickers for your wall, but I'll use them in a journal. And then this campus loose leaf paper, um, so it's an interesting, it's an interesting size. Let me get it out of the bag, throw the bag away. <coughs> it's cool paper, I think it's like possibly Japanese paper, probably from a Japanese um, store. We have a lot of Japanese and Korean stationery stores. So there's number and date at the top. So it's sort of like a little ledger. It's got these tiny little holes and then it's got bigger, two bigger holes. So I think it was made for a certain kind of a book and it's just lined blue on top and bottom. And then it's like, you know, Kokuyu, K-O-K-U-Y-O, loose leaf. Yeah. Um, and then I found this book and it just looks really nice. It's Stuff I've Been Feeling Lately by Alicia Cook. Not familiar with her, but there's lots of cool, like, so it's, it's written as though everything is a track, like on a tape, you know, um, it's, it's all just these verses that are quite interesting, uh, and meaningful. <clears throat> I'll read one to you with having prepped nothing here. 
I find comfort in the colors of a sunset. I find a special magic in the fact it never photographs as beautifully as my eyes can witness it firsthand. I find a certain peace in the conclusion of another day lived, and I find hope in the precarious promise of tomorrow. Currently listening to Leanne Womack, I Hope You Dance. So it's like she's written a poem and she tells you what she's listening to. Um, and isn't that so resonating that you can never photograph the sun as beautifully as you see it? I have had that thought so many times. I found this book, Gifts of Love, a selection of unusual love poetry. So I got this for a couple of reasons. One, you know, I like poetry. Uh, two, the images are cool. Um, it's from 2000. <clears throat> That's a nice little, you know, garden. The April Lovers Telephone. It's a Robert Frost poem, a Rossetti poem. Um, actually from Dante Gabriel Rossetti, not Christina. And it's Silent Noon. And we have this little purse you know so just nice little kind of images right little vintagey looking good images so yeah and poems and then is this the last thing finally i can get rid of this gigantic bag it can't be like an enormous costco bag i like have to figure out what to do with that probably redonated i found wildflowers of jamaica um, it was gifted in 1980. When was it printed? 1974. So it has some lovely pages. So it's got the black and whites, which I quite like those plates. But then it also has color plates. So there's a color plate. And they're different than uh, many. Sorry, you hear my beagle. He's barking at a squirrel. He's a high maintenance dog. Oh yeah, he's going crazy now. I'm guessing it's the morning doves. We have six morning doves and two squirrels that are like, I don't know, they're having this great time in my backyard with the bird feeder and everything. But yeah, it's a beautiful book. So that, my friends, is the end of this Thrifty Thursday. I thank you for hanging out with me. And until next time, may the thrifting fairies be with you. Bye for now.